Back in the 80s, I learned a couple important things. One, if my hair didn't need more hairspray than my girlfriend's, she'd dump me. Two, in a pinch, I could share her wardrobe. It's got the leather mixed with the... And three, there was more to the awesome guitar playing that was going on than just over-the-top leads. Yeah, when we think of hair metal, we think of all the crazy awesome lead guitar playing that went on, and I definitely cover that to a pretty large extent on this channel. But there was a lot of great rhythm playing to be had too, and some innovations being made. And today I'm going to cover the top five 80s hair metal guitar rhythm tricks. Welcome to Music with Barky. To start our top five list, we go to an Eddie Van Halen staple, and that's the sus four chord. We're talking about like Panama. That chord there where you add your pinky on, let's play something in context and then we'll come back and talk about it. All right, so you see there, mostly this is played with the second bar chord form. You've got your basic bar chord here, like an A, and then right underneath it is the D, that bar chord that you struggle with when you're starting out, and you have to play three strings at once. And all you're doing is adding your pinky to the B string, one fret above what you're barring. And in the 80s, people would use this stuff no matter what key it was in. So like if you had, say, something in E minor where you would normally have an E minor chord, D major, C major, and then an A would be a minor chord. If they were using this sus4, everything would just be a major chord with the sus4. It's the only time you ever heard metal music using majors. Let's look at trip number two now, and that is dyads which are basically two note chords and they work really well if you have like a low note, a bass note that you use as a pedal tone. Let me put something in context though and we'll come back. Alright, so you see in the example there, I was basing all my dyads on the G string and the D string. And basically to use these well, you do have to use your majors and minors. You don't want to mix it up all minor or all major like you did with the sus4 chords. So a minor dyad is two frets apart. So if I have an A minor, I have the A on the D string, and I have the C on the G string, so seventh and fifth. And then behind it, maybe a G major, if we're in the key of A minor, you have an A minor chord, a G major chord. And by the way, if you don't know which ones to make major and minor, I do have a whole video on that. I'll link that up here. But real quickly, if you're in a minor key, like A minor, you can think of your minor chords as everything right in this whole step box. So all your minor chords and minor dyads, they're gonna be A, B, D, E. So one, two, four, five. If you were an E minor, it would be the same box, any minor. So if this is your minor pentatonic, so then E, F sharp, A, B. So that's how you know which ones of your dyads are gonna be minor. In any case, the minor ones, as I said, look like that. The major ones are gonna have only one fret difference between them. So an A major would be the A note here on the seventh fret, and then it would be the sixth fret, the C sharp. And then A minors. So a typical 80s trick would be to maybe pedal on that A string and then move through them, say in the key of A minor. A minor, G major, F major. It's also fun to not just do majors and minors, but move around with all the notes available. So if I have, say, an E minor, and I have this note here, and F sharp is available, I have this fourth here, I have a fifth here. Something like that with real fast galloping rhythms. Let's take a look at number three now. Okay, so for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and directly attribute it to the player who made this stuff famous, and that's George Lynch from Dokken. And here it's the use of minor sixths on the chords. It's still kind of dyads, 
but it's using a power chord and either going to the diminished fifth or the minor sixth. Let me do an example and then we'll come back. So a lot of what George would like to do and started getting used in the 80s was to take something like this E chord here and add the sixth. So you have your power chord and you just go up a half step. And then he would use the diminished fifth either in that spot or if I do it in key here, I can go to like C where I have the F sharp right there at the diminished fifth. So I have something like Or if I want to use the diminished fifth right on the chord I was on, right out of a docking song. That there. Has that cool semi-evil sound. Now for tip number four, we're going to go use one of my favorites, and that's the moving bass figure over a pattern. As I've been doing the whole time, let's roll an example first. So here the idea is that you have a bass part that the guitar also outlines and you play the same thing. So if I'm doing instead of what I did in the example, I'll go back to E minor here and I do something like that sus4 thing in, but use, I'm going to have a bass line that goes E, C, A, B. So I can go. Something like that, where there's a pattern. It works with riffs as well. I can do like a... It's really cool to have something that repeats and loops with a moving bass figure beneath it. And let's look at the final tip now. We're gonna go back to Eddie for this one. On this last one, we require the use of effects and specifically a delay pedal that you set usually to one slap back or so and put it pretty high in the mix and it creates a kind of rhythmic effect that you're going to hear. It was made famous by Eddie with Cathedral with the volume swells, but can also be used as a regular rhythm technique. Uh, the edge comes to mind from you too. Let's listen to an example in context. Okay, so you can see there, I just have a simple slap back at 120 beats per minute and it's dotted eighth notes. And if you just play plucked chords, creates that cool kind of effect where there's a whole nother thing going on underneath what you're picking. So I hope these all made sense to you and you get something out of it. Maybe you can incorporate them in what you're doing with modern music or even if you're playing retro stuff. It's always cool to grab from days past and mix it with what you're doing that's modern as well. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And until next time, guys, keep making great music. Hey friends, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. It makes the whole world better.